Doctors Bill and Veronica Winston are dedicated to seeing lives changed through the power of prayer. Our loving and highly trained prayer ministers are ready to pray and agree with you. We know that prayer can turn around any situation in your life. Contact us by phone at 1-877-543-9443 or submit your prayer request online at billwinston.org forward slash prayer. Follow us on Periscope and Facebook to join us for our regular live prayer sessions. We want to thank our partners who have made this prayer call center possible. Together, we are transforming lives throughout the world. If you are not a partner, we encourage you to pray about joining us in partnership and be a part of the wonderful work that God is doing through this ministry. We love you and look forward to praying and partnering with you. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers. All kinds of forces have been resisting us that have been assigned by Satan to work against us, and we haven't known it. But now is the time of vengeance. Whatever's been tampering with your destiny, whatever's been afflicting you, whatever's been humiliating you, whatever has been coming against your peace and your progress, your joy, your career, your business, your family, God is about to deal with them starting right now. Just remember this. God loves you. I mean, he loves you more than you know he loves you. All right, now, we're stepping into something now. We've, as a matter of fact, we've stepped into it. And this is the, the time of the vengeance of the Lord. It's the time, what we call the latter rain. The latter rain. And so, if you go with me to Isaiah 61. This is what Jesus read in the synagogue as he got up to read. He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he, the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek and he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Wow, lot, there is a lot in that, folks. All right, the first part of that, as you know, Jesus got up to preach in the synagogue. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is God is upon me in Luke chapter 4 and verse 16, uh, verse 18, pardon me. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, so forth. Well, Jesus was reading from Isaiah 61. And if you look at Isaiah 61, verse 2, he says, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then Jesus stopped. Then it says, and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. All right. Let's look at first this word vengeance, which has nothing to do with revenge, which is some people think. It is God's punishing offenders, and it proceeds from a love of justice. And it's not some emotional retaliation or anything like that. It's the justice system of God. I want you to get that. Because God is not, he, it's not revenge with him. Revenge is a low life principle. It is not high life. High life, the Bible says, pray for those who despitefully use you and say all manner of things against you falsely. It says pray for them. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to pray for them. Are you with me here? Yeah. No. You 
Many times because God's people haven't known vengeance, we have been victims. All right, I, I want to show you how, how vengeance looks because vengeance goes together with recompense. Over in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 30, he says, For we know him that had said, Vengeance belongeth to me, and I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. All right? And over in Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 8, he said, for it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. Now, that's a prophetic word speaking about the church. Now, just stay with me now because it's going to make sense in just a minute. So, the point that I want you to see is that when now vengeance comes in, vengeance, that part Jesus didn't read because that part didn't apply to Jesus's ministry. It stopped at to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and he closed the book and sat down. Now, then this season, which Joel talked about, he talked about in Joel chapter two and verse 23, be glad then, you children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, who hath given you the former rain moderately, and he'll cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. So he's saying about rain. What is the rain symbolizing? It's symbolizing the anointing, that you're sh shifting into another aspect of the anointing, that this first rain was for the gathering in of the church, which you saw in the book of Acts. The next is for the beautifying of the church, the latter rain. This is for those who mourn are going to be rejoicing. This of those who were being harassed and so forth, you're going to be made comfortable. See, this is the anointing that is now come on the church. Now, this, this is powerful because um, this... This anointing uh, has with it a protection aspect. And look at John chapter 14 and verse 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, I'll do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I'll do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall send you a another what comforter that he may what abide with you how long how long forever this anointing that God is now releasing on the church remember what he said in verse 28 of Joel chapter 2 I'm going to pour out my spirit upon how much all flesh so God is sending us places that we are going and our assignment is to establish his kingdom wherever we go. The Bible talks about Romans chapter 14. It talks about the kingdom of God. It says that the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Are you with me? So he is saying here that God wants you and me to bring heaven to earth because we are his ambassadors. Am I right? And he's sending us into places that we are to bring under kingdom jurisdiction. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Y'all with me here. If you recall, Pilate and Herod, that's right in the Gospels, but they were debating which one of them was going to have pronounced sentence over Jesus. 
Well, one of them discovered, no, he's a Galilean. He should be over there in that jurisdiction. But it uses the word jurisdiction. And jurisdiction says, this is my jurisdiction. It's usually some kind of, 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 of geographic uh, land mass. And it has to do with air rights and everything. You fly airplanes, you come into a, a airport in a city and you don't know it, but there are layers of jurisdiction. There, there's a jurisdiction that goes from the earth to 5,000 feet that the airport owns. And then there's the next jurisdiction which the state owns, so maybe. Or in the next generation, uh, go all the way up to 23, or uh, the PCA, 23,000 feet or whatever. Now, I'm saying that remember when Jesus was casting demons out of that man who had legion. He said, don't send us out of this country. See, because demons are assigned certain jurisdictions. They're assigned certain places. Are y'all with me here? And here is, look, here's a working example. So God, when we first came to Chicago, we came here with how much? $200. Okay. I just tried to see if y'all with me here. But I go down to a meeting that I was invited to speak at. I didn't have anywhere else to speak. And they invited me down there. And when I spoke, God said, okay, heal the sick. And miracles broke out. And the person said, God said, turn this ministry over to you. Well, it was about 15 people. And I said, okay, let me pray about this. Okay. But anyway, it was hard going. And God said, take it. Now, why? Why? Because that was my assignment. But understand, I'm walking in there with diplomatic immunity. You, you got what I'm saying? I'm walking in there because nothing can touch me. Come on now. Look at, look at Psalm 105 and verse 13. Just, just look at that real quick. When they went from one nation to another and from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. Saying what? Touch not, come on, my anointed, and what else? Do my prophet no harm. So they can't touch me. Why? Because I'm under an order of protection. I'm under divine protection from heaven that's going to take care of me. Psalm 91, verse 10, please. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come nigh my dwelling. Watch this. For he shall give his angels charge over me to keep me, how many? In all my ways. See, see, I'm going down there with this as my covenant heritage. See? See, I'm more conscious of this than I am of something bothering me. Isaiah 54, 17. This is, this is God's vengeance now. I'm, I'm talking about this. No weapon that is what? Formed against me shall prosper. Keep going. Every tongue that shall rise against me in what? Judgment. Come on. Thou shalt condemn. What? This is a what? Heritage of the servants of the Lord. And my righteousness is of, of me, say the Lord, thy righteousness. Y'all with me? So notice no weapon formed against me shall prosper and every tongue, see, because he knows witches are going to try to send out curses. He, he knows that. But God got me covered. <laughs> But he said over in Acts 16 that he's, he will save me and my house. See, that's all of my immediate relatives. That's, that's my children. Come on. That's my grandkids. See, he's going to save all of them. 
So just, Satan is like the mafia. He'll try to go after your family, but he can't touch them. And I'm going to show you that in the book. Now, because people of God have not known vengeance, they've been victims. Because none of this works except by faith. Look at Romans chapter 10, verse 11. For this scripture says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Let's look at that in another translation. Just see what it says. And watch this. If you believe on him. The scripture says, no man who believes in him, who adheres to, relies on, and trust in him will ever be what? Put to shame or what? Be disappointed. See, he'll give you his word, but you got to what? You got to believe it. Look at the next verse. No one, for there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek, between the black and the white. Come on, African-American saints. The same Lord is Lord over how many? All of us. And he generously, come on, bestows his riches upon all who what? Call upon him how? How? In faith. In faith. Oh, what I'm reading right now won't happen to you if you're not doing it in faith. And faith comes how? So they got to hear it. How can they hear without a who? Without a preacher. And I've been sent. I've been sent to tell you that your days are being harassed. Uh oh. So I go down there, down, down, or over to Lake Pulaski, and take that, you know, and a lady comes in one day. We have a little prayer meeting. You know, little, very little. And the lady comes in, kind of aggressively comes to the door and says, where's the pastor? I said, I'm the pastor. Well, I need to see you. I said, you see me now, lady. You know you had to be tough right, right down in there where I come from. Boy, that's Dodge City. You know, you got to be ready. I said, you see me now, lady. I said, what do you want? She said, I, um, I, the drug dealers have taken on my block. They come out at 12 noon every day and leave at 12 midnight. We can't go to, children can't play. Neighbors are terrorized. What are you going to do about it? Well, she came to the right place because that's my jurisdiction. Come on, you got, you got to see what I'm saying, man. No devil can come in your house. That's your jurisdiction, man. So what happens? Woo, well, I'm getting revelation as I'm talking to you up here. Woo, hey, they be shit talk. Ah, so what happens? I said, get in this circle, let's pray. Pray, pray some in the spirit. Bible says, if you don't know what to pray for, pray in the Holy Ghost. Then ask for interpretation, boom. Interpretation came back to me. He said, take this bottle of oil. He said, take it. Give it to her, bless it, give it to her and tell her to pour it down the middle of the street. Now that's all God told me. I said, that's all he told me. But I trust in the Lord with all my heart. See, I'm not going to try to find a reason why I can't do this. Well, she might not like what I say. So what? Here's the bottle, take it. If you want them out, take, do what I said do. The Bible says his commandments are not grievous. He didn't tell me to run from there downtown. He told me to just give it a bottle of oil. So she got the oil, went and poured it down the middle of the street, came back in three or four days, came in the door with a big smile on her face. Pastor, guess what? Well, I know what, because the word won't return void, but it shall prosper in the thing that it said. Isaiah 55, 11. So it, it worked. And if you believe him, you will not be ashamed. Say amen. If you believe what I'm talking right now, you will not be ashamed. I said, this is the time of the latter rain and God is about to beautify the church. What happened? She said, they came out and they came out there 
and stayed next day one hour and left and never came back. Now I'll invite you to, to Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 17. Watch this. And the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. My people shall dwell where? In peaceable habitation. Come on, in sure dwellings and in quiet, come on, resting place. Listen, he didn't say you're going to dwell where they're shooting every day. Now, I'm talking about you can shut down the shooting. See, you, you, you got jurisdiction over some of this. But God will allow what you'll allow. I'm telling you, we about to go somewhere now, saints. Now, what has been happening? All kinds of forces have been resisting us that have been assigned by Satan to work against us and we haven't known it. That they have been working through spiritual forces using people to gain advantage over us. But now is the time of vengeance. It's the time that another comforter has come. All kinds of forces have been resisting us that have been assigned by Satan to work against us and we haven't known it. But now is the time of vengeance. Whatever's been tampering with your destiny, whatever's been afflicting you, whatever's been humiliating you, whatever has been coming against your peace and your progress, your joy, your career, your business, your family, God is about to deal with them starting right now. Now is the time of God's vengeance working on your behalf removing all obstacles standing in the way of your kingdom progress. To order today's two-part teaching series, Vengeance of the Lord, on CD or MP3, on DVD or MP4, contact us at 1-800-711-9327 or order online at billwinston.org. Looking to get an even greater understanding of God's vengeance? Then order today's additional offer, God's Love of Justice Bundle. And in addition to the Vengeance of the Lord two-disc series, receive Dr. Winston's highly anticipated book, Vengeance of the Lord. This book will arm you with the truth to give you unshakable confidence in the power of heaven's justice system to protect, preserve, prosper, and promote you even in the face of extreme testing. Also included in this book are prayers of vengeance for you, your family, your business, and church. Order this must-have bundle today. Hello, Bill Winston here. Now, I trust that you've been blessed by the day's message. I'd like to take a moment to share a couple of testimonies with you that, that have come from our prayer call center. We have a call center that's set up to pray with people who would call in. Now, we created this center for you, the partners, the viewers, those who would call in and need prayer for any matter. It doesn't make any difference. We want to pray with you, stand and agree with you, whatever we need to believe God for you for the thing that you need God to do in your life. Now, here is a testimony that was given to me. This came in from Florida. This particular person had a family member that was in a coma. They'd been in a coma for two weeks and that this family member was, the family was being challenged as to whether to take the person off of life support or just leave them on. Well, this one person decided to call the prayer center here at Bill Winston Ministries and that prayer minister prayed with them and believed God for that 
person's deliverance or that person to come out of that coma. Well, shortly after the family called this person and reported that the sister, the dear sister that was in a coma opened her eyes and woke up and then asked for a drink of water. Now they ask what time that this sister called the prayer center. What time did they pray for this dear sister in the hospital? They prayed at 1116 AM in the morning. And that is the exact time the sister woke up from a coma that she had been in for two weeks. Praise God. Let me give you another one. This tech testimony comes from Illinois. This particular person called for prayer uh, for their godmother. Now she had stage four cancer and was going to have surgery. Now after they had received, received prayer from the prayer call center, the doctor started the surgery but could not any longer find cancer in this person's body. Now these are actual testimonies that have been coming in. So I'm just saying here that if you need prayer, if you need somebody to agree with you, we've got people that know how to get hold of God. I'm telling you, see, God's plan is that we all be healed. God's plan that we all be delivered. God's plan that we all have enough abundance or whatever have you. So if you're going through something that isn't God's plan, in other words, there's something in your situation there that you know is not God's will for your life, call that prayer center. They're standing by. These folk know how to pray. And as you pray with them and they agree with you, we are gonna believe God that every need of your life is gonna be met. Well, remember, we're here for you. The prayer call center is available. We love you. And this is Bill Winston saying, keep walking by faith. Doctors Bill and Veronica Winston are dedicated to seeing lives changed through the power of prayer. Our loving and highly trained prayer ministers are ready to pray and agree with you. We know that prayer can turn around any situation in your life. Contact us by phone at 1-877-543-9443 or submit your prayer request online at billwinston.org forward slash prayer. Follow us on Periscope and Facebook to join us for our regular live prayer sessions. We want to thank our partners who have made this prayer call center possible. Together, we are transforming lives throughout the world. If you are not a partner, we encourage you to pray about joining us in partnership and be a part of the wonderful work that God is doing through this ministry. We love you and look forward to praying and partnering with you. The mission of Bill Winston Ministries is to preach the gospel of the kingdom throughout the world. This broadcast has been made available to you through the faithful support of Bill Winston Ministry partners and friends. We invite you to become a partner and join Dr. Bill Winston as he trains believers how to live independent of this world system and have dominion over it. Thank you, Bill Winston Ministry partners and viewers for your continuous support of the Believer's Walk of Faith broadcast. The Believer's Walk of Faith is paid for by Bill Winston Ministries partners and viewers.